Uh, beforehand, I gotta ask, who was the one that asked the question last week that jinxed Nick Falk? Who was that? Not pointing any elbows or fingers or anything like that. Okay. 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 All right. That's probably Kuharski. Yeah, we'll blame Paul. Blame Paul. All right. I don't imagine you, you had to uh, uh, counsel Nick too too much or, or uh, you know reconstruct his confidence or anything like that after a after a miss. And you say anything to the guy? Or yeah, anything? I mean, I just went over to him and I just told him, "Hey, uh, great streak, you know, it started. Let's let's start on another one." Um, you know, Nick's great. He's like. Obviously, he wouldn't take it back, but, uh, you know, Nick's a professional. He understands that the most important kick is his next one. Um, and then he went out and made it. So hopefully uh, he can start a new streak. Do you know exactly what he did on that? Uh, yeah, it's just a miss hit. And it looked like um, from on the field, he kind of hit um, the grass a little bit beforehand. And, you know, he just came off, said, hey, I just didn't hit a, hit a good enough ball. How would you, uh, heading into the season, maybe – maybe the expectations or at least the coaching points for Ryan Stonehouse and how you think he's kind of followed through with those this year? Yeah, uh, great. Um, he's done a lot of things that we've asked him to do. And um, I know we put a lot on him this past week too. Um, you know, having a good game. They had a really good punter in Tampa Bay. Jacksonville has a really good punter too. But uh, we, we put a lot on him. We expect him to do um, a lot for us. We got a high standard for him as far as whether we ask him to kick the ball 60, 70 yards in the air or we ask him to kick the ball 50 yards with hang time. Um, I thought I think he's done a really good job. Um, this week, his big point of emphasis is on plus 50 kicks. Um, you know, we don't like touchbacks. That's one of the biggest things that uh, we, we talk about a lot. Um, and we're going to work on it a bunch today. And uh, hopefully we can continue to get better at that. Uh, with Tajay and fair catches, just, is there strategy to that game by game? Or is it just kind of get out there sort of situation? Just kind of how do you guys handle that? Decision? Yeah, it's, it's game by game. Um, you know, there's some times that we would love to return every kick. Um, one of our things that we say a lot, we're going to be aggressive, but not reckless. Um, you know, Camarda, their, their kickoff guy there at Tampa Bay, he was hitting them 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four hang times. And when you get them 4-5, to 6-7 deep in the end zone, it's just kind of being reckless. Um, and we don't want, you know, us to get in a bad situation where they tackle us inside the 20 or we even get a holding call because we're having to hold on our blocks a little bit longer. Um, so, yeah, that's just week to week. Um, we'll change it up and see if we like a return. Um, here and there, or we like our personnel a little bit better. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely week to week. You're probably always looking for um, for ways to have teaching moments with players. I guess the Monday night game where the Bills uh, got caught with 12 on the field, is that something, a, a reminder? Uh, oh yeah. There's, there's th certain things that we give players each and every day. Um, just little reminders. You know, for instance, we went over, um, we got Tampa in a 10 up situation on their punt team where we brought our corners in. Um, so we reminded them how we're going to block certain things like that. Um, if teams give us some certain situation on the punt team, field goal situations, how that happens. So, yeah, it's definitely a, a teaching moment uh, that we'll use um, each week. Uh, Tom, Levine and myself will go through every single game and we'll pick good plays. We'll pick bad plays and we'll show them to the players um, on Saturday too. Um, we do a not top 10 each Saturday for the players to, to see and, and, and just really learn from. Um, you know, they might smile and giggle on some things, but really it's for them to learn certain situations of what could come up and how we have to be ready for them. I guess Broncos executed the, I guess, hurricane so well. I mean, what's the time you need on the clock from uh, from when the ball is, is down. Yeah, uh, usually we're trying to, once a play starts, we're asking for at least 18 seconds. That's what we're trying to get because we feel like we can rush out our field goal team. Um, when the offense starts with 18 seconds, we feel like we can run out on the field, execute a hurry up field goal situation. Um, and give or take a few seconds here and there. So uh, big thing with Nick, he's just got to understand the time. Is it 23? Is it 18? Is it 25? Uh, can he take his steps or not? You know, that's, that's really the key part about it. And then us just doing a good job of communicating the call.
is it for you to, to go back every year down to where you're from and on top of that to face a division opponent? Yeah, it's always fun to be able to go home and um, play in front of your family. It ain't fun getting tickets, but <laughs> but um, it's always fun to, get to, to be able to go back home and play against the team you grew up watching. Have those tickets ticket numbers come? ever gone down or do they continue to... It's pretty consistent. It's pretty the same. Um, I try to knock it out as quickly as possible. What was your first time in that stadium? I think, did you play an all-star game in high school there? Can you remember that day and what it was like playing there? Um, yeah, that was a, a, a long time ago. But yeah, um, got a chance to play in that stadium. And um, it was cool to be able to play there as a kid and then get recognized in the stadium um, once I uh, got to high school and um, my, my senior year. So yeah. Been to that stadium a good bit. What you run for there as a kid? I can't remember, but um, I think I had a couple of touchdowns. My dad's always say if I score, he give me some money. So I was trying to get to the end zone every play. Do people treat you well there, even though you're on the opposing team and the, the rival, because that is where you're from, and maybe they respect what you've done. Yeah, I mean, I think they're more nicer when I'm not playing, you know, when I'm visiting rather than when I'm playing. But, um, you know, it's all love. It's, you know, it's, it's football. They're a fan of, you know, the home team, and, you know, I respect it. And, you know, we're the uh, opposing team trying to come win, so it's all football. You're not the guy that focuses on milestones, but you're closing on 9,000. Is that number just kind of crazy to you? Uh, speak to how long you've played, too? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a blessing um, to be able to, you know, get to you know that that mileage um you know um don't take it for granted very thankful for the for everyone who helped me get to, get to that point um and um you know just blessed and thankful to be able to play this game as long as I have and um you know looking forward to Sunday I was uh were you trying to break out of the funk that this team's in how mm -hmm. important is this Sunday and do you feel like you're in a position where if, you know, if you don't do this now as a team uh, it's not going to happen yeah, I think it's just focus on um, getting a win, um, wanting to to be better, and then letting the show when the game time comes. Um, I think it's just it's just time. Um, you know, it's been a lot of up and down, and you know, I know guys are just wanting to find some consistency, and knows that it, it starts with us, and we just got to go out there and execute on all three phases, make the plays when they're there. Um, be disruptive on defense, execute on offense, and then um, be able to get some explosives out of special teams and play our style of football um, uh, to be able to win. But um, I think it's time for us to start doing those things consistently to be able to have a chance to do anything. How has the week gone just as far as like, keeping morale high in the building? Yeah, I mean, nobody's, um, nobody's confidence is, is down. I think, you know, we all grown men. It's a grown man business. I think we all understand what we have to do um, and what we have to do better, quickly, um, urgently, and um, go, out, go out there and do it. You know, there's a sense of accountability amongst each other to go out there and do it and just and execute the way we know how to. That accountability, is that just kind of like a person to person thing, or like have you or anyone else stepped up and you know, said we have to be more accountable? And yeah, I think it's just self accountability, and then count accountability on each unit. You know about uh, our jobs and what what we need to do to be able to be effective um, on all three phases, and going out there and 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 do that. We know every play is not going to happen the way we want to, but as long as we stay with it, um, as long as we stay locked in, and be able to have good more than bad, then I think we'll be all right. That's always very steady, but with the record being what it is at this stage, is something different f for you? Mm -hmm. Is that it? Does it feel different? I mean, how do you <coughs> deal with the fact that you're in a much different spot that you than you've ever been? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it hasn't been like this. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's about how you respond. Um, you know, you can't um, dwell on it too much. Um, still a lot of football left. It's about the response. And I think guys are willing and ready to respond um, the way that we know how to. Um, and, um, you know, I, I love adversity. I embrace it. And um, I'm, I'm ready to go. And I know all the other guys are as well. Reaching that point this 
season. So <coughs> other rookies might hit that wall people talk about. What are you saying to Tajay just about keeping pushing through, keeping going? Yeah, I don't think he hit no wall. He, he he's ready every every week. He hit no wall soon. I don't think he'll hit one. Talking to guys in the locker room yesterday, they still seem very positive and excited. I think because of how many divisional games you guys have left, there's always, always going to be a lot of energy for those yeah, who yeah. kind of feel the same about hey, well, there's still a little bit of time left on the clock for us to make something happen. Yeah, for sure. I, oh, I mean, we we just played one, and this is a this is the next one, and um, you know, just got to focus on being one to know in in this game. And then just uh, you know have that same mindset um, um, as you know time time goes on, have that underdog mentality, just coming to work, being positive, being com confident, and then making each other better, and then let it go, let it go uh, and show on Sunday. But we just played one division game, so we still got plenty of time. When it comes to maintaining morale, like <coughs> that high level, and staying constant in your mindset, does that? responsibility fall on the players? It, do, do coaches affect that? Is it the culture of the organization as a whole? What do you feel like drives that consistency? Well, I think, you know, we all have a culture, um, you know, that we, that's, that, that's been built around here and the standard that's, that's been set. And I think that, you know, when you, when you feel like you're not meeting that, you know, you just try to do everything you can to get it to where you want it to be. And sometimes it's not going to happen overnight. Sometimes it's not going to happen in a week. It might take a little little time than than than, than others. But um, you know, you just got to stay consistent with it um, in your message, um, in your play, how you approach work, and um, you know, you know, leaders doing that as well. And just going out there, um, being hopeful and being faithful to to how you work and uh, the things that you preach, and knowing that eventually it'll happen for us. And I think that that's where guys are are right now. And we just need to put some big plays together on, on both sides of the ball and play our style and then let the chips fall where they may. But, you know, it's, it's time for, you know, everybody to step up and, and do their job just a little bit more. The struggles inside the 20, at the red zone, has that maybe been maybe the most frustrating since that's been an area that you all have been so good at in, in recent years? Yeah, uh, you know, because you, you, know, you work so hard to get down there. And then nothing comes out of it, or you know, um, you know, field goals are are points, but you know, you want to get in the end zone, and um, you know, um, you know, you, when you when you put a drive together and you have having positive plays, you know, you want to fin finish in the end zone, you know, to uh, to give you a chance to be able to win in the end, um, and you know, I think that's been you know, the, the rough part about it is getting down there and just not getting in the end zone, but you know, we just got we still have time to you know figure out what we need to do better, execute, and then put points on the board when it's, when, when we get down there to be able to give ourselves a chance in the end. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Doing good. Good. Tim, if three games in, how are you seeing Will as a rookie kind of take and see what he's doing on film and making corrections and trying to, to build on that for the next game? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, he's doing a, he's been doing a really good job um, really protecting the football up until, you know, late in the games. Um, so that's something that, that we're going to uh, look to continue to build on. And, and hopefully, um, you know, he can continue to learn, like, no matter what the situation is, we can't just throw the ball, you know, up for grabs, like 500. I like can't, we can't, can't do that. So, um, you know, he's done a good job with that. And he's done a really good job of really taking command of, of the huddle, um, being in there, uh, re really being able to drive the operation. Um, and, and you can just see here with his body language and things along those lines, he's just more comfortable um, in there, you know, giving the play call, uh, un, you know, understanding, you know, what, what that role entails. Um, and, and hopefully we can continue to take strides there. You talked about wanting to be a better leader. What is that like and how challenging is that for a rookie who has to step into that leadership role? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it's I, you know it's a challenge for sure uh, for anyone to come into a leadership role. Uh, the the best way to go ahead and, and, and um, you know earn the confidence of your teammates uh, and, and, and to develop into that role is to come in and, and be consistent every single day, uh, do your job at a high level, um, and, and not just you know go out there and perform at a high level. Obviously, that helps, but being able to do all the things behind the scenes uh, that may not necessarily take any talent. Um, you know, is, is, is something that he's done a good job at since he's gotten here. Um, and, and again, we're, we're looking to continue to improve in every area. Maybe way back at the combine, you talked about kind of using the speed that you had to let your guys be, be faster. Mm -hmm. How's that 
how's that worked put into practice? How's that worked with what was the end of it? Put into practice. Um, I think at times it's been successful. I think obviously uh, the results aren't aren't what we've uh, wanted, um, but uh, I, there there's evidence of that. Um, we just need to uh, uh, be more consistent. Um, I need to be more consistent in, in putting our guys in those spots, uh, and we need to be more consistent in, in being able to execute um, when when we are in those spots. The will obviously facing a ton of pressure. Is there anything he can do? better against the pressure uh, even though you know a lot of it's obviously not under his control yeah you know it's 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 under everyone though you know what i mean and and uh like there's specific examples of of different play action protections where um you know the 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 hold on hopkins in the third quarter um he wins on his route uh, we miss a run through uh you know in in the backfield um at, at the tight end position and it's a five yard gain instead of possibly being, you know, an explosive play. Uh, so there's, there's different aspects of the pressure where everyone just needs to continue to do a good job at. Um, when, when given the opportunity, he's gotten the ball out, he's been accurate. Um, so there's different times uh, while we're looking at it where he can continue to work the pocket and maybe, uh, you know, uh, avoid some of the pressures. Um, but again, like he's, he's, everyone needs to continue to do a better job of, of picking up the different pressure looks that, that we've gotten um, from, from you know, me being able to help the guys on the edge uh, to, to our, our, our backs, our tight ends, the line, the wide receivers being able to get open or when they're helping in protection. So everyone's got a big, a big part of that and, and we all need to do a better job there. The red zone issues, is that something, would you say those are self-inflicted wounds or is it something defensively done? What, what would you say? Yeah, uh, you know, Probably more self-inflicted uh, when, when when looking at it. Obviously, it's always going to be a combination of, the, of of those two things. But uh, you know, we've we've got to do a better job of being able to stay on schedule um, and and not and not have whether it be a mental error or, or um, a mistake be the reason for us getting behind the sticks. Um, if it's if it's we have we have a play called and it's a bad design, or we have a play called and uh, you know we get beat. Like that's a different deal, but we we got to eliminate the, the the you know self-inflicted wounds and then being able to to to, to make plays when when the ball finds us. And then I've got to do a better job on third down of, of continuing to get help uh, to our guys on the edge to make sure that we have enough time to be able to go and win. Overall, as, as you go across the league, red zone scoring itself is down. Like as you're watching the film, do you see that defenses are doing something different? Or you know, I I I can't speak lead wide. Um, it certainly seems like there's there seems to be more zone down there than what we've seen in the past, um, which, you know, as we know, in the red area, everything happens faster. The windows are smaller. They open and close quicker. Uh, so when you have more guys in, in coverage, you know, that that's my own personal theory. I don't know if there's any any scientific data or anything to back that up. But, uh, you know, that's kind of what it seems like. Mike has mentioned, I guess, Dylan and Jalen Duncan both as possible at left tackle. Mm -hmm. What's, what have you seen from Jalen, I guess, so far yeah. in, uh, as far as his development? Right? Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's freaky. Uh, in terms of his ability to go out there and move, and, and his athletic ability, um, and, and he's done—he's he's very intelligent. He's done a good job of picking it up, um, and, and really taking this however many weeks it's been uh, throughout the season of, of learning learning how to be a pro. Um, so uh, excited to continue to, to uh, you know see this growth and see if he can take advantage of this opportunity. On that same note, how much can Dylan get out of a week of practice? I yeah. guess on the left side since. Yeah, not even not even just at the left side at the tackle position in itself. You know, getting ready for it. Uh, obviously, um, you know, as 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 we've talked in in uh, the past couple of weeks, uh, kind of singing his praises because he's been our swing guy and um, has been able to go from guard to tackle, uh, you know, seamlessly. Um, and so, you know, last week, um, I, I think he'd tell you he wished he would have played better. Um, but having a whole week of, of practice in there, uh, being able to work on those different techniques on the left side um, is, is, is only going to help him. Where do you see Brock Morton in? Uh, yeah, he just got here today. So he's, he's doing a good job of, of, again, coming in and working with, with Haas and Sully and Matt, uh, just trying to learn our, our, you know, our offense and, and being able to, to figure out where the, the cafeteria is at this point in time. But, um, you know, he's a guy, he's, he's, uh, he's played. I think he started seven games for Carolina. Um, highly intelligent. Uh, he's big. He's strong. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where, where he fits in here once we are able to see him work in person. Do you see him straight as a guard? Uh, I can't. I, I, I don't know. I don't know enough yet to, after having seen him practice. Uh, 
can't answer that one yet. When, when it comes to a, I guess a high volume guy like like Hopkins in terms of catches, what's what's a good catch percentage? Maybe, maybe his maybe might not be as good as a guy who, I guess you know, gets gets fewer targets. What what in your mind? What's what's a good percentage? Yeah, when when we throw to him, I'm I'm we're expecting him to catch every ball. So, um, you know, and that's that that's uh, due to the experience that we've had with him, um, being able to watch him, and, and 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 he's got such a unique ability to 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 catch balls in, in tight windows and be strong and be physical. Um, where as long as you put it somewhere near him, he's he's always going to have a good opportunity to catch it. So, uh, I don't know what the percentage is, but but when we throw a ball to Hop, we're expecting him to catch it. Obviously, as players get older, like their skill set. Changes. Have you seen from the time with Hopkins in Houston to here? Have you seen any changes in his style? No, no. Uh, still there. Um, the elite. I mean, just look at his ability on the sprint out that we had on on Sunday with his ability to be able to go and and get two feet in. Like that's. Uh, as simple as that looks, it's not. He's got elite sideline ability. He's got elite body control. He's got ginormous hands. He's strong. Um, catch radius is unparalleled. He's just, he's very talented um, in, in, in his ability to, to catch. Basically, like we said, if you put it in the vicinity, he's going to have a good opportunity to come down with it. How much of the issues of individual offensive linemen about <coughs> what, the, what the rushers are doing to them as opposed to the soundness of their technique and their own play? Um, yeah, l like we talked about earlier when we were talking about the red area, it's 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 probably, you know, uh, going to have breakdowns in technique that we need to be better at and be more consistent at. Um, and then there's going to be times where you know the defense has a good rush. So, um, you know, we we're continuing every single day. I know you guys are down there watching them. They're working the the pass the protection fundamentals. Uh, we work every single day as we're going through it. Uh, the different the different pass protection schemes um, against different looks against different pressures, um, so you know that's never going to change our our ability to focus um, and, and our attention to, to detail when it comes to the different fundamentals and, and, and the different schemes that we're using. Do you think you guys have uh, of high, I guess, explosive plays or, or chunk plays last year, Jake? Uh -huh. um, what do you think? Is it reason or two that, that we haven't seen as many of those? Um, yeah, the ball the ball hasn't found them. Um, you know, and, and again, uh, finding different ways to, to try to, to get him open. Like, you look at the, the first play of the game, um, he's screaming down the sideline. They had two guys on him. It opened up the window for Hop to, to be able to, to, to make that 15-yard that gain. So, um, you know, there's definitely probably a little bit more attention to him after last year. Um, and so just continuing to work to try to find different spots to get him, to get him running through the field and, and, and get him the ball. Good? I'm good. How are you? Good. With Trevor Lawrence, uh, how key is it to try to make him hold that ball for an extra second and, and get him off that first read? Yeah, I think it's a it's a big key. Like, uh, does a really good job understanding what he's seeing coverage wise and knows where to go with the ball. We got to do a good job, hopefully, disrupting that first read and see if we can buy some time for our guys to get home. You guys talk so much in the offseason about next level, uh, not just getting the quarterback, but getting the ball free. You know, what's your assessment of? Yeah, I think there's been opportunities. I think guys are trying. Um, when we're able to get back there, I see guys trying to attack the ball. Um, it's just got to continue. We got to get more opportunities. We got to get back there more. We got to win more. Um, and when you get back there, then there's chances to attack the football. So I mean, it continues to be an emphasis. I think it's showing up more this year than it did last year, but we got to continue to hopefully get back there and have those opportunities. Well, how would you assess how Roger did in his first game playing back on the edge on outside? Yeah, I think there's some good, some bad. Um, obviously, he'd probably like to have that third down back. Um, tough call, we, we pressure and don't get home. That's what happens. Those guys get left out there and they got to find a way to win. But um, overall, I thought it was pretty good. Just some things that he hasn't done in a while. He had to kind of work his way back to. Returning faces old team this weekend. How, how would you kind of evaluate how he's done his his first nine games here? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing with him is just the consistency, uh, week in and week out. Um, I think he brings energy to our to our unit, uh, but just continuing to find the consistency in terms of winning the pass rush, um, the run game, everything that comes involved. But um, he's been good for us. I'm happy he's here. What's, what's he kind of do, got to do to, to be a little bit more consistent? Do you think about yeah, I think more? first of all, it also, it's all going to start with his get off. He's got to use it. Like that's that's a bullet for him. Um, he's explosive. 
continuing to work edges, right? Not be down the middle, find ways to work edges and be able to counter back in late. At times, those guys are pushing him. He ends up getting high a little bit and just finding that counter to be able to work back underneath. Can you take us through what happened on that, uh, the, the screen touchdown by, by White? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of things. They, they, they threw a screen into a pressure, number one. Um, hopefully, you can get it down for a lot less gain than what it was. Um, but ultimately, we didn't really make a play. Guys, it was really across the board, to be honest, Ron. Like, I mean, they got the ball off. Whether we need to buy some time out there on the perimeter to allow some of those guys to retrace, we kind of took, took the easy way out, so to speak, or picked a side when you need to really buy some time to slow down that back. Um, and then just the effort, the pursuit, the, the zone drop, not getting extended, not carrying things vertical. I mean, it was, it was a perfect storm, right? Like, it's probably going to be a, a successful play for him regardless, but hopefully it's not a 43-yarder. Well, with how it was designed, it, Harold was supposed to come under and Monty was going to be around the edge. Yeah. We're probably going to win a lot of games holding teams at 20 points, but uh, this offense has struggled in some games this year. How do you keep defensive players not to feel like, hey, I've got to make a play, I've got to do something outside the defense that could get you? Get yeah, I mean, uh, we got plenty we can do better. We're not doing enough defensively to win. Um, I mean, we're, we're giving up plays we shouldn't at costly times, at critical times. Um, we got to be more consistent. And like I've hit on throughout the year, we, we got to eliminate the bad plays that are getting us beat. Um, those five, six, ten plays, whatever it is, throughout the games they unfold, like we have to be better there. Um, so there's a lot for us to coach on, a lot for us to improve on every week. It's no different. Um, but we got our own issues that we got to we got to work through and improve on. Are your guys frustrated with the lack of takeaways? Uh, I think so. I mean, I am, right? I think all of us kind of are. We, we expect to get a little bit more. We work at it. We emphasize it. I think the encouraging thing for me, for the most part, is you see the attempts. You do. You see the attempts. You see guys trying to hammer at the ball. You see guys trying to get their hand up. We've, we've gotten a few more of those. I mean, last week, Jeff tips it, and Eric's sitting right there, and Baker out jumps them to knock it down, right? So, I mean, we just got to continue to go about it and emphasize it and take advantage of our opportunities when they're there, and hopefully we can get a few out. Red zone, two more minutes. Are you doing anything different this year as opposed to before, or is it just still like status quo? We do a lot of the same stuff. I mean, we're, we're pretty consistent what we do. We'll change various things by game plan, how we see it. We can alter different coverages by game plan. You got a game plan down there a little bit because there's a, a lot of scheme. A lot of scheme stuff shows up. Um, but we're not we're not by any means a scheme of the week team. We're going to do what we do and do it well. I think everybody knows that. But we do have our adjustments here or there by game plan. As you, as you go through and, and watch, you know, tape the different offenses, et cetera, the defenses that they're facing, are you noticing them doing different things? The reason why I ask is because red zone scoring is down so much as opposed to yeah, I mean, I th I think it's a, probably a combination of things. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's it gets harder down there for offense. Is it supposed to? Like as a defense, you got to you don't want to be down there, but when you're down there, you got to take advantage of the situation in terms of the field shorter. They can't run by you, right? There's a lot of elements. It's tougher to hopefully run the ball because you got DBs that are tighter to the line of scrimmage, um, but they lose the element of sh of stretching the field, right? So. The defenses that under, most of them obviously understand that the back line use the back line as the twelfth defender, and everything's tighter. You got to be able, hopefully for us, we got to match tighter, right? Like we know the ball's getting out quicker, zone, man, whatever. We got to make sure we're tight on body, and doing everything we can to use that back line to help us. Uh, a little bit more in terms of pressure, anyway, than the old Harold. Landry, I think he's got four sacks in the last four games, at least in terms of pressure on the quarterback. Or, or, you know, is he kind of back to more in the form than, than he was? Yeah, I think it continues to progress as we go. Um, it's been good to see him kind of get the production there. It's been big for us getting him back. Um, anytime those edge guys can go in a little bit and we can continue to get the push up front, the coordination of all four of those guys is vital. Like, if you have one without the other, it's hard. The quarterback can hold it. He can step up or he can extend outside potentially. So. I think all those guys just continuing to improve, uh, continue to be coordinated is is critical, 
for us um, and continue to help each other. Like the communication, all the all the aspects of that goes into it and when you're trying to game and do some different things. So hopefully it continues with Harold and we get some of these other guys going. You guys did a good job containing Travis Etienne last year in both your matchups with them, but how has he jumped as a, as a player? Yeah, he's explosive. I mean, they're... They're explosive across the board. They got speed across the board. Um, I think he runs with really good balance. He runs behind his pads. You don't see him falling. He's gaining extra yards. I think he's got a top two or three in yards after missed tackles or whatever that might be. Um, so he's a good player. We're going to have to do a good job. They, they use him in the passing game, the screen game. I mean, especially after last week, I'm sure that was looking pretty good to him. Um, so we're going to have to know where he's at, know where he is, know how they're using them. They're going to find ways to give him the ball. Yep.